Okay, uh, so for our next talk, we have Peter Herter, and he's going to talk about the uh, XORG Foundation and what's going on currently. <coughs> Go ahead. All right. Hold on, people. Pizza's coming up soon after this talk. You can, you can do it. All right, so first of all, I would like to, uh, on behalf of the Foundation, I'd like to t thank Tom for organizing XTC. It's been pretty awesome so far, so... So yeah, it's been great so far, so thank you very much for that. Um, first of all, Exoc Board of Directors, I apologize for the rendering. It looked a bit better on DisplayPort, but the X server keeps crashing. Um, so the Exoc Board of Directors, first of all, who are we? Um, Rob Clark, Alex Deucher, Deucher sorry, Egbert Eich, Keith Packard, Martin Perez, Matthew, me, and Daniel Livetta. And I can happily announce now that uh, Daniel is the new secretary. We had a vote yesterday with uh, a... <laughs> So his, his duties start after this talk. We had a nice vote, six yays, one abstain. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the treasurer, Stuart, who unfortunately couldn't make it, he had to bail out um, a day before. Um, okay, so what, are, what do we actually do? Um, first of all, all the directors are elected for two years at a time. The election is usually in the February to uh, April time frame, depending on when we get around to do it. Each year, four board members are up for election. Um, and you too, if you're a member of XORC, you too can be uh, on the board of directors. One of the things, it doesn't actually take a lot. There's not a lot of effort with uh, meetings every two weeks. Most of what we do is uh, the distri distribution of funds. So XORC still has, from probably 10 years ago, um, still has a uh, account with, I think Stuart said the current amount is about $40,000 left. Um, and what we do is pretty much we finance or we decide on the distribution of funds for XTC, for Google Sum of Code, for EVOC, for travel sponsorships, and so on and so forth. Uh, most importantly, the board does not control the technical direction of X, Wayland, Mesa, anything else. So I don't think anyone has ever tried, but if anyone, any of the, the XOC board would ever try to tell you what to work on, you can laugh, and laugh at them. So. Um, we have a couple of PR accounts, so we have a G Plus account, a Twitter account, and a YouTube account, all maintained by various people. Um, I think Martin has already started uploading a lot of the talks to the YouTube account and posting them on G Plus. Um, Alan, are you, are you uh, pumping the Twitter account for the videos? We have all the talks from yesterday already uploaded. Okay, so all the talks from yesterday are already online, and the talks from today will be online very soon as well, obviously. All right, um, so first of all, I uh, encourage all of you to become members of XORG. Um, XORG membership does give you a couple of features, such as access to specific documents, like I think the visa specs are still part of that. Um, in theory, travel sponsorship is restricted to men members. Um, obviously, you can uh, get the support from the board for organizing XTC and so on and so forth. So please go to the, the uh, members.exorg, join up. All you have to do is provide a, uh, a contribution statement when you get approved as a member, which is usually the case, um, you also get to vote in the next election or you can uh, run for the board of uh, directors. Okay, so the things we did last year since last XTC, uh, we had uh, participation in Google Sum of Code again. We had six students accepted this year. We had five complete the project. Uh, one student pulled out. It turns out that once the, the project started, it turned out that it was, he was in well over his head. The project was significantly larger than expected. And so he had to pull out before finishing. Um, the five, for the five that uh, completed, so Varad, uh, Thomas, Alex, uh, Sao, and Sultan, congratulations. These are the, the list of projects here um, with the uh, mentors in the brackets. If you're interested in Google Sum of Code next year, either as a student or as a mentor, just let us know. It's pretty much just a matter of signing up on the Google website um, for the, as sign up as a mentor or obviously submit a project as a student. And we're always happy to have a, uh, a number of projects. Most of these are, are really, really useful um, to push just specific projects where you can work on it for two and a half months at a time over summer. You get paid for it. So it's really good to, for a student to just push a specific project further ahead in uh, more time than you would otherwise not have. The uh, endless vacation of code is uh, XORG's equivalent to Google Summer of Code because we do have our own independent funds. Um, this was, I don't know how old this is, like probably 10 years or coming up to 
seven to ten years now when it was decided. So it's pretty much like Google Summer of Code. The big difference is rather than Google paying the money, it's us paying the money, and we don't have the specific timeframes. Um, specifically for people living in the southern hemisphere, for example, Google Summer of Code is a bit hostile because it falls in into all the um, into all the uh, exam time because our summer is obviously different than your summer up here. Um, so with the endless vacation of code, you can pretty much start any any time. All you have to do is apply to the board with a project. We have uh, currently we have one project ongoing, uh, porting Glean test to Piglets from Juliet Fru, who is in Cameroon. Um, the mentor is Brian Paul. Uh, a couple of changes that we need to do over the next year for or for the next project. Uh, one of the things we're struggling with is uh, last year we already tightened the rules, so we had a couple of more requirements that were from students. But one of the things we're just generally struggling with is really hard in X to get students up to speed from zero. So Google Sum of Code to some degree is designed for people to get into a new project. Um, other projects are sim uh, other similar, like uh, Outreachy, are similar to get students up from zero. We had the intention that Endless Vacation of Code is such a, a, a system where we get students up from zero, but unfortunately we just can't handle that. Um, none of us on the board usually have the time to really mentor someone who is completely new to a project. Um, we had one of the projects in the past was a cross project, like across two, two separate entities within Xorg, and it just gets harder and harder. So one of the decisions we've made yesterday in the board meeting is that um, we won't do endless vacation of codes projects from essentially new, completely new contributors anymore. We will still do them for people who are already known in the community. It has a, a lot higher uh, chance of success. And in the end, it's like one of the things, if you want us, if you want to get paid for two and a half, two and a half months of coding, I think it's only fair that we say, okay, you, you should be involved with the project before and you should be able to send patches. You should be able to figure out how to build the project, how to basically get to run it. Um, in the past, both with Google Summer of Code and other systems, we've, we've wasted quite a fair bit of time just with getting people up to that point where they could actually build, run, and debug the system. So other than that, nothing really changes. We just expect that whoever applies for Endless Vacation of Code should just be a member of the community already. Um, Outreach, we took part in, in Outreach last year, which was, uh, used to be called the Outreach Program for Women. Um, it is, again, it's similar to the Google Summer of Code uh, with the specific filter of like it, it is specifically targeted for people that uh, identify as female. Um, the, we had one participant in round number nine, which was December 2014 through to March uh, 2015, Azal from uh, the Ukraine. And she implemented server-side XCB. Uh, her mentor was Christian Lindhardt. Uh, that project uh, finished successfully. The code itself is still not merged. We're waiting. We have a couple of code cross dependencies here between libxcb and the server. Um, I think one of the or one or two of the extensions got already ported to XCB. So the patch set is there. It's pretty much waiting for someone to pick it up at the moment. She had some bugs that she had to patch track down too. Right. Okay. Yeah. So and I think libxcb is kind of preventing some of that code to actually be used in the server as well. Yeah, so there's like some, some cross dependency, which is pretty much what I mentioned before. Like if you have a cross dependency between the X server and libxcb and you need to kind of push both at the same time, not an ideal environment for like a, a student project for like two and a half months. Um, the next thing, XTC travel sponsorship. So uh, we sponsored Jake Edge from LWN in exchange for good coverage at LWN. <laughs> or at least, yeah, objective co uh, coverage. Um, and uh, Google Sum of Code and Evoc students generally will always extend the offer of travel sponsorship if they want to attend XTC. So we have uh, Marek, uh, Sam, and uh, Varad got approved for uh, travel sponsorship. Unfortunately, Varad uh, couldn't, sort, couldn't get the visa for Canada, so he had to bail out last minute. Uh, SBI merger, that's a big topic going on at the moment. So Xorg is a, the Xorg Foundation is an LLC with a 501c3 tax status in the US. 501c3 pretty much means that donations within the US are tax deductible. Donations from outside are not. Uh, one of the things why this is not particularly useful for us is that pretty much all we do is XTC, Google Sum of Code, Evoque, and Outreachy. Those over the years, 
that's pretty much all we do aside from like various administrative stuff. We're not particularly good at administrative tasks when it comes to running a company, when it comes to like adhering to what, whatever tax codes are required and so on and so forth. Especially because I think at the moment at least half of our board is not US or not in the US or at least not familiar with the US regulations. Turns out that other, uh, other like if you say Switzerland or Australia, you don't really understand the, uh, the US tax laws as well as other people. So one of the, one of the so, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> At least it's easy to follow it up like with time zone changes and stuff. So one of the, one of the decisions that we made last year was that we want to merge with uh, SPI, Software in the Public Interest. The website is spiin.org, um, which is the, an umbrella organization. Uh, member projects of SPI include Debian, freedesktop.org, uh, FFmpeg and a couple of other projects. So large projects, we are actually uh, somewhere in the middle ground to small project uh, compared to other ones. The big benefit for us is that everything is administrative from like legal entities, accountancy and so on and so forth, that's all offloaded to SPI. And the uh, second advantage is that we can actually collect donations then because we haven't collected donations for about, I don't know, 10 years or something like that. Or we've at least never collected uh, donations from individual members. Being a member of SPI uh, allows us allows anyone to just click the donate button on the SPI and, and donate money to us. Um, right. So in order to merge with SPI, we need to change our bylaws because our bylaws are obviously designed for a 501c3 at the moment. We had a vote for that in April with uh, 35 yay, 2 nay, 4 abstained. Um, which is obviously overwhelming support for the SPI merger, unfortunately, because we need the two-thirds membership to uh, vote for the bylaw change. It did not pass. So we're going to try again. The uh, annual Board of Directors election is planned for February. Again, as I said before, you two can run for the uh, board election. And the bylaw vote will be at the same election. So expect when February to April comes up, when the election is announced, expect to vote for A, the, the new Board of Directors, four of them, and for a yes, no on the SPI merger. And I think that's, oh yeah, we need two thirds. So please vote. I'm not gonna tell you vote yes or no, but please vote. So we get at least a, the two thirds membership voting for it. All right, that's it. So again, as I said, our main tasks are Google Sum of Code, Endless Vacation of Code, Outreachy, and SPI is the big topic obviously at the moment. And XTC, of course. Did you mean two thirds to vote yes or two thirds to vote total? Two thirds to vote. <laughs> yeah. Now we need the most conservative reading of the bylaws is two thirds yes. Oh really? Yeah. The other one is a bit ambiguous and yeah. I thought, it was, I thought we had to have two thirds quorum and then we just can't have a majority of that. Less than clear? Yeah. Okay. It's not, it's not obviously clear. Yeah. So, so two thirds yes. So Which would you guys to at least get two thirds of the membership to vote? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so the, the, the question was, uh, Chase said he didn't see any marketing or email or rem reminders. Yeah, we screwed that up. Um, we, had the, uh, we had before the before the actual vote, we had a uh, FAQ of like, this is what the F SPI merger is with heaps of links and everything. We had that sent out to the membership. Um, we didn't send it out public, so because the public isn't, yeah. Um, but we, during the vote, we just did not send out enough reminders. So there was a lot of people who said, oh, I was on holidays, I missed the first email, and then suddenly the vote was over and I didn't realize. Um, so, yeah. Oh, okay, yep. The problem I had with voting is that I didn't realize that uh, your XORG membership expired if you didn't renew it. Um, right. And so I logged into the web page and uh, it said member since whenever, but also then had renew membership. And so right. I thought I was still a member, and so I didn't get the email saying, hey, there's the vote coming up. Yeah. So we might need to just send an email to Mesa Dev, Zorg Devel, yeah. all the usual community we, lists. All, done, I think. And, uh, all the members got. Uh, so the problem was I was not a member because my membership was purged. That was good, actually. The fewer oh. members we had, the better. So well, um, so if you were, if you still were a member by the time uh, the election process started, 
uh, then you got the email because I m emailed everybody who was still on the member list before I expired the members. So um, this was actually this was actually done, and I think I also spammed all the other projects uh, talking about the the election. I didn't, of course, I didn't spam them f uh, for membership things. I just explained how the elections worked and always pointed to the wiki page where where this was actually. Um, where everything was um, written down, so um, yeah, sometimes you don't know how much uh, um, you need to. You should beat the drums because some projects or some mailing people on some mailing lists may actually get annoyed by getting the same message multiple times um, on different days. Um, I'm sure that um, I sent it to Mesa sure Dev, but I can not check. Making that mistake again next year, so. Your message yeah. went to Mesa Devel at listsafrida.org. I don't know if that works, but the real address is Mesa Dev. Right. Not a, not a, not a, but yeah, in, in terms of membership, yes, you do need to renew every year. Um, I think the bylaws even require that we purge the member or um, update the membership, which is but like renewing your membership is click, 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 done. It's easy. Um, it's easy. Um, we're going to send a reminder out for, yeah, you need to renew your membership before the election. We will send a reminder out for elections. You haven't voted yet and so on. So ex expect a little bit of communication this year. Um, certainly more than last year. Any other questions? Then pizza it is. Thank you. <laughs> The room upstairs is uh, T4040, so it's in this corner of the building on the fourth floor. Uh, elevators are just over here. We have the room, uh, we're guaranteed to have the room a few minutes after five. Uh, we might have it a little earlier if that, uh, if that class runs short. So we've got a, a bit of a break here. We'll have uh, pizza up there at quarter past, and I'm hoping we can get started with the talk at about, uh, about half.